Um, my name is Nicole. I'm with Simtech, and uh, I believe we have Donna on the line too. Donna, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Donna Curley here from Simtech Solutions. And uh, today we're hosting a Q&A on mobile tech and reporting tools for the 2020 point in time count. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at um, the Counting S app, which is from Simtech Solutions. Uh, if you haven't had a chance already, um, here are some instructions for getting set up in the app. Um, you can use the setup key demo in step five of these instructions uh, to try out entering data using uh, some of the surveys. Uh, if you do that, uh, you will see your data represented in the command center when we look at that later. Um, the point of this presentation is essentially just to answer your all's questions. Uh, we know we have people with a range of experiences with counting us. Um, there are some longtime users who are on the line right now. Uh, we also have some first-time users and people who have never seen the app before. So we're going to try to answer a wide range of questions um, and really have you all lead this. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted to also show you some of the resources that we have um, and are going to be looking through today. This is also being recorded. Um, so you'll have the recording later and be able to share that with your team members. If you want to start um, entering any questions you have through the chat box, we'll be looking through that too. Um, so some of the resources that we have are the command center, which is where you will see all the results from the Counting Us app. We have the Counting Us app itself. This is counting.us, the uh, browser version of the app, but we have it set up so it looks like it's on your phone. This is what you'll see when you actually download the app from the Google Play or the Apple Store. Then we have our volunteer registration page, which is a feature that is available. And we also have the point in time info dashboard, which is where we keep information on the point in time counts for various regions throughout multiple years. So that's something we'll be exploring later too. Donna, did you see any questions in the chat box so far? Uh, looking through now, I don't see any questions just yet, just a lot of introductions. Great to have everybody on board. Wonderful. All right. Um, so we do have a number of resources available on the pointintime.info website. Um, that's where you can find the dashboard and uh, a lot of other information. So we have FAQs, support resources, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these are some of the questions that are featured on the website um, that we thought we would go through um, prior to any questions that you all have. Uh, Donna, do you want to start? At the point in time dot info site. Um, we have right on the landing page the information on where to download the the uh, application from. So you can see you can download from either uh, Google Play or the App Store. We have some questions that uh, you can get answered right from this site. If you want to look, at, drill down a little bit deeper, you can go to the um, under the tech the Counting Us app. You click on that link, that'll bring you to the Counting Us app in a little bit more detail. And it'll show you, again, also where you can download uh, the application from and which setup key to use to go ahead and actually demo the product itself. So we have a, a demo product key once you um, download the application and you go to get started. Um, that's what you'll have to put in for a key, and that'll get you registered so you can now practice using the app. And as Nicole also pointed out, we do have a Counting Us um, website, so you can actually go to the, the browser and play around um, on the browser from you know, the, basically a copy of the, of the site itself. Uh, Nicole's going to go into quite a bit of detail on the, com the regional command center. Um, he has information on that here, right on the point in time website. You can see the, the different maps, and she'll, again, she'll go into some details on that. Um, so you can get some good information on this. So again, folks that aren't super familiar or new uh, to the point in time, counting us app in the command center, 
a lot of information up on this website. We, um, you know, encourage you to kind of take some time, go up there, look around. Um, what, there's a tab on our experiences. It talks a bit about uh, Simtech Solutions and how it got involved in working with the, the app and worked closely with HUD in the past on this tool. We have a great support area. We have information on the regional uh, pit reporting, so you can go to that itself. You can see this is a great graphic on how we really pull all the pieces together, really our, our developed framework um, that we have. Again, a lot of hyperlinks in these pages that you can go and read up on more information about our framework. Um, we have a real, real nice section on our support frequently asked questions. So especially folks that are, are new to the app, that really want to, new to the app and the command center, want to get some questions answered, there's really a couple ways to go about that. Again, we encourage you to go up to this site here and go to these hyperlinks to get those questions answered. Another way would be to support a help, uh, submit a help desk uh, ticket. What you can do is you can just click on submit a ticket from here and that will go ahead and open a ticket at our virtual support desk and then one of the team members can get back to you on that. So again, a lot of information here about planning the count, managing your data and how the reporting will go. Under support, we also have some other SimTech resources. You can see under here we have some uh, free resource, our, our time trend analysis. You can go ahead and um, download that resource. Some nice information on tips for um, count administrators. We have uh, paper copies of this survey that can be downloaded. And some other cheat sheet information up here. Um, again, not going to go through all of it for you. I know you guys can read, so just kind of really want to try to show you, um, you know, what, what we have out there for resources. We have the HUD resources, and as you probably know, the uh, point in time count change hasn't, uh, HUD hasn't made any changes from last year to this year, so that's kind of a nice thing for, for folks. Uh, if you've worked on it last year, um, you've already uh, experienced that and don't have to worry about changes for this year anyway. So here's your HUD resources here. And then we also have a nice section with instructional videos. So if you have a little bit of time, you can go out and take a look at these videos. And as Nicole mentioned, this uh, session is also being recorded, which we will share. We have another FAQ site. Um, really, again, just kind of answering the questions that you might have. And again, you can also open that support ticket if needed. So a lot of information there. And then, of course, our news section and how to contact us. And then for your administrators, you can log into the command center right from this spot. So if you have any questions on the command center at the, at the very high level, you, know, you can just type those into the, the chat box. And if not, what I'd like to do is hand it back to uh, Nicole so she can um, carry on. Sounds good. Thank you for taking us through that. All right. Uh, Kenneth, I saw you were asking about step-by-step -step instructions. That's something that you can find um, at the FAQ section. Let's see. Let's go over here. All right. So frequently asked questions. This is sort of like the page for if you're brand new to the software. Um, so I would recommend that you go here. In terms of more technical questions, the support FAQs are going to be slightly better um, for getting into more of the nitty gritty. And these will take you to links to pages that will provide you with uh, more information uh, on those technical pieces of things. Let's see. Maybe have a little time. OK. So let's get started. Um, I think one thing I'd like to walk us through really quick is this is the Counting Us app itself. Um, this is what everyone can download for free, easily. Um, you can have as many users as you want on this app. And this is the like volunteer-facing piece of our technology. Uh, this is where people can go to fill out their surveys. Um, and then from there, the information that uh, is collected here will go into the Point-in-Time Command Center. So right now we're looking at a demo region. Um, if you went into the point in time 
um, and the Counting Us app and filled out a survey, the information that you put in there is going to show up in our demo region. So right now, this is real-time data. Um, these are the genders of the um, people who have surveys submitted to them, ages, veteran status, etc. cetera. Um, I can also see individual responses. Let's see. So this is a map of where everything's showing up. This is the region that the demo is set up for, but clearly we have people who are around the country. Um, so <laughs> we have this all set up throughout here. Um, let me see. And then here's a list. And let me just hide really quick um, some of the information here. Okay. So this is the information for the individual responses. And I know, Shay, that you were asking about um, what the data looks like when you're exporting it. Uh, you have the option to export the data from here. You can do all fields, custom fields. You can filter which records you want to include in your export. Um, yeah, there are a lot of options here. You can also create reports. Uh, based on sheltered, unsheltered, and combined data. And we can filter that by geography. All right, and let me check what questions we have coming through. Um, the important thing to know about the command center is that this is only going to be accessible to the people on your team that are running the point-in-time count. You can assign admins to either the full like regional view of what's going on in your COC, or if you sign up for uh, regional administration, um, you can assign people to specific regions where they can only see the data associated with their regions within your COC. All right, and I'm going to look at the questions really quick. All right, I see that someone asked, does each community have a point of contact with SimTech? Um, yeah, you'll have a contact that we will keep track of. Uh, if you have multiple contacts, that's something that we can keep track of too. We can reach out to you all. And then if you want to add additional admins um, to the COC, that's something that you can do as well. Um, so in this Users tab, it'll show all of your different users, um, what group they're in, what their contact information is. Yeah, throughout here. All right. And I saw that someone also asked about changes to the questions or the order of the questions in the app. So we have surveys. We have the unsheltered survey and the observation survey, which are what come when you purchase the uh, Counting Us um, application. Let me see. Let's go to surveys really quick. So we've got unsheltered surveys and the observation tally, and those are things that come standard with the survey. Um, these are based on HUD standards and include all of the required questions from HUD. You have the option to add custom questions to the survey as well. That's an additional feature. Um, we also have a sheltered homelessness survey uh, feature that you can add on. Um, and that is primarily for um, shelters that are not in HMIS. And that way they can enter, enter their information into the system when you're exporting the data um, in the report. Let's see. You can select sheltered, unsheltered, or combined. And that way you can get all the data that you need for your account, uh, depending on what you're analyzing there. And I saw that a question just came in. Are there any training resources or videos that local volunteers can be directed to? We do have some videos available, and we're also planning on hosting a volunteer training later on. Um, so we want to make sure that your volunteers are informed of how to use the app. We also recommend that um, you have volunteers download the app prior to um, prior to the point in time count. One thing that's nice is we can set your surveys into a testing mode. 
And that way people can submit responses. You can see who's submitting responses and where they're submitting responses from. So if there are certain people that you want to make sure are submitting responses, you can check to make sure that they actually submitted their responses and are practicing using the app. Um, if they, it, and then once the um, surveys go live, all of that test information will no longer be included in the reports that you run from the system. So you can test it as much as you want. You can practice with the system as much as you want. Make sure you're familiar with it. Uh, and then from there, uh, go live on the actual night of the count. And I saw someone just asked, Kayla just asked if the app can be in Spanish. Um, Matt, can you correct me if I'm wrong? But I believe um, the Connecticut Balance of State translated the sheltered and unsheltered surveys for, our, for us last year. And that's now available to all communities. So there is on the resources page a Spanish version of the intake form. The surveys themselves are not in Spanish inside the app as of yet. Um, and there, if that's of interest, there is a there is a potential opportunity to have that ready in time for the 2020 point in time count. And again, uh, thanks to Connecticut, uh, they're providing the translation services for that. Um, so that's not something that's in play right now. Like I said, there's a Spanish version of the intake form that people can download by going to the resources page. Also, the step-by-step -step instructions for downloading the app, um, you'll see those there as well. But uh, so for now, we do have a paper version that people can use, and we are working towards a Spanish version in, in uh, coordination with Connecticut. Um, that is an optional add-on. Um, so it's not something we don't. We try to limit the number of surveys that people are exposed to when they download the app. So uh, this wouldn't be something that that everyone would see uh, without you know us setting it up properly up, up front. So if that's of interest, you know, feel free to reach out to us and we can talk that through. And uh, just while I'm I'm talking, it seemed to be the question about the the contact. I believe that was more uh, in line to try to find out if there's a designated contact that each. Uh, community would have uh, as far as the stem tech team goes and yes we do try to build personal relationships but we uh, also need to work as a team so that way people can be sick and they can go on vacation uh, so uh, our help desk is really the format that we use the approach that we use so we have a virtual help desk that we handle all issues and requests through hopefully it's more requests than issues and if you wanted to show that uh, relatively quickly you can do that. The easiest way to, to, to reach out to the help desk though is simply by emailing helpdesk at simtechsolutions.com and that creates a ticket and that make, makes sure that, that nothing gets lost in the inbox. Thanks, Matt. And I saw that sure. we had a question from Annalise. Uh, when do you anticipate holding that training webinar for volunteers? We anticipate hosting that in January, slightly closer to the count. Uh, but if that's something that you want to share with your volunteers prior to that, we also have documentation on how to download the app and how to use it available on the Point in Time Info website. Let's see. I think that's under FAQs. Is that under FAQs? I'm sorry, which resource are you looking for? For the, um, videos? Like the, the cheat sheet. See. Yeah, it's all under resources. Getting started information. Yeah. yeah. So this is I, under support, some tech resources. And if you want to sort, like, look through here, download some of these resources, see what's most relevant to you, and uh, distribute it from there, uh, we've got a lot of great information uh, that would be very relevant to your volunteers in the meantime. Uh, and I saw... Yeah, I, I'd like to... I'd, yeah. I'm sorry. I'd just like to add that one of the features of the app at the command center is that the command center can be left in, in training mode. And we also include within our agreement one hour of, of complimentary training that's specific to your region. So what we tend to do is we do a train the trainer approach with your regional admin. Or, and then um, once it's comfort, typically lean on uh, those admins to train the volunteers. It, it really is a, it's a pretty simple and intuitive process. But you can make sure the volunteers are ready by leaving the, uh, act, the count activity in training mode and 
let them bang away at it. And as soon as they can get a survey submitted, which you can see in the command center, you know they're well trained and ready for the count. So uh, follow those step by step instructions, have them download it, submit a survey. And it, it is a really intuitive app, so they shouldn't really get hung up. But we can do additional training, but it's probably a short training if we do one. Um, just, just saying, because it's not a, a lot on the, on the app side for them to, to get hung up on. Definitely, thank you. And um, this image right here is actually pulled from one of the um, resources that we have available on our website. And this is something that we recommend people share with their regions, with their specific setup key, um, and that they potentially even print out and have at the site where volunteers go to so that um, they know exactly what to do day of. And we can go into the Counting Us app too, um, but first I wanted to answer Shay's question uh, on determining chronic homeless status. Let's see. We have an answer to that question on the support FAQs page. Let's see. Homelessness. Here we go. So this is where you'll find the answer here. And I can pull this and put this into the chat also. All right. How does the FD duplicate if someone is surveyed by multiple volunteers? Uh, that's a great question. And I think that's something that we should go into the app for. Let's see. This. All right, and so this is what the Counting Us app will look like. <laughs> and you'll choose Count. I'm going to do Demo Region, and let's just pick Western Region. Okay. When I get started and I go to Unsheltered Survey, The first question is going to be, one second. You're going to have to click allow, yeah. Oh, thank you. And, and just while she's doing that, um, you will all have your own setup key that's tied to your region. So uh, be, because Nicole has already been associated to her region, she didn't have to she skip that step. So once you do it once, you don't have to do it again. But when you first register the app, you'll have to enter in your own region specific setup key. Uh, mm -hmm. But today you can just use demo. Yeah, and I can move around my location here uh, so that I select the exact location or I can enter an address. And the next step, first question is, have you already been interviewed today for the point in time count? So we're already trying to make sure that there are no duplicate um, responses there. If I say I haven't been surveyed, then it will go on to the next question. So we try to make sure that there are no duplicates in that way. Um, with any point in time count, there's going to be some data quality that uh, needs to be addressed on the back end. So that's made very easy by using the command center. I saw that someone had a question come in about um, do we need special permission to access the command center. Uh, you will have access to the command center once uh, we have a contract set up once we set up your region, um, and then you can determine who has access to the command center from there. Um, that's something that will be determined by uh, your regional admin. Um, and I saw there was a question about asking accessing the demo regional command center. Uh, it is not possible to access the Demo Regional Command Center, but I'm happy to show you through any of the features that you have questions about.
All right, and I think we've addressed all of the questions on there so far. Okay, so the app doesn't deduplicate. A person has to look through the information to deduplicate. Yes, I believe so. Let me kind of respond to that one, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, please. Okay, so the app isn't going to automatically deduplicate, but you are able to sort and filter the data. Uh, so keep in mind that part of the, the, the way, the reason why we do a point in time count is because it's a snapshot at a given at a given time. And ideally, you have your count teams set up so they're dispersed throughout the region. Uh, this way, you're, you have kind of an assurance that you're, it's not just a, um, you know, a blitz where everyone's just running out counting people. Uh, we do encourage people getting surveyed versus just being tallied, and how does it as well. But beyond that, you also have the ability to not only just sort and filter the data, but you also have the ability to look at where the data is collected on the map. So you have a few different indicators to identify if someone um, has already been found and already been counted. So not only were you collecting name, date of birth, gender, uh, which are all uh, you know unique identifiers, and you can sort by those. Um, but we also have the locations on the map as well. So if there's a, a John Smith and a Jim Smith, uh, but they're in two different areas of community, uh, you know, it's likely that this just happens to be a John Smith and a Jim Smith. But if you happen to see, you know, a John and a Jonathan Smith in the same location, then you can assume that there might be a duplicate. But it really, we encourage using the list view and the map view to help read that down. But again, what what Nicole shared with asking, have you ever been surveyed for to, um, have you been surveyed so far uh, for the night of the count, should help weed out a fair amount of that. Yeah, and I think the map feature is especially helpful with that. As you saw when we were going into the Counting Us app itself, um, we do get people's location um, prior to them filling out the survey. Uh, either like an estimate of the address or um, the location that uh, their phone is sending us. Yeah, and it might be um, worth sharing the count, team, the count team management function as well while we're here. Yes, it's an optional feature and, it's, and it may be overkill for some smaller region, uh, but it, for the larger regions, it does help ensure that you're, you're having proper canvassing and you're not having uh, different volunteers cover the same territory while leaving gaps behind elsewhere. Definitely. Yeah, and um, on top of that, we also offer enumeration as an additional feature. Um, so that's something that there's more information on our website about. Um, regional management is also an additional feature, um, but it can be incredibly helpful. We work with a number of balance of state, um, and so breaking up your state into multiple regions can be really helpful uh, for making sure that uh, you have people volunteering in the right place um, and are getting all your needs met there. So these are the different regions for the demo region. Um, and those are all defined. And I'll show you how this user piece is how many volunteers are allowed to sign up for each region. And then you can assign volunteers from there, which is why um, there are some with more than um, the designated amount of volunteers. Um, and the volunteer piece is something that we can go into later also. But let me click on this. So regional geography is something that you can define. If I go here, I can edit geography, and we can create um, we can look at layers by county, zip code, or city. Code. And we also look at them by census block. So these black outlines are the census block. And then we also have zip code, county, and city. Sorry, I saw that there was a question that just came through. Yes, the regional management feature is an add-on with extra cost. Um, so Going here, I can click on additional regions that I want to add. Let's see if that goes through. 
So I can select regions in that way. I also have the users that are in this region. I can add users from this location, either by searching for the user or adding them myself. For teams, I can break up the region into multiple teams. Uh, settings, we can also allow volunteers to register for regions or uh, keep those regions um, just for specific volunteers. Nicole, would you mind touching on the volunteer registration portal that, that can be integrated with us while we're definitely while you're sharing that? Yeah, so I have uh, the volunteer registration for Ventura County set up here. Um, this is also an additional feature that's available to communities. Uh, it connects directly to the Counting Us uh, Command Center. So as you set up regions, um, as you determine how many volunteers you need in each region, that information is going to be reflected in your volunteer portal here. Um, the people who sign up here are also going to show up in your command center under users and teams. Uh, from there, you can change whether they're just a volunteer or an admin. Um, you can also reassign people to different regions. Yeah, if you don't mind scrolling down and clicking register, yeah. we won't actually submit one, but I think it's good for people to see what information is collected. Definitely. And there are some features here that I think are customizable by community as well. Yeah, we do, we do try to right size our offerings. And so when you hear those additional features or, um, you know, this is optional, I think that's a big part of it. Like we will work with you to try to find the right, you know, what's the right size and scope and also trying to work within your budget constraints. So if you do have interest in working with us and you're, you're not working with us already, you can always just shoot us an email. Um, there's a contact form in the top right uh, corner of the, of the point in time that info website. That's the easiest way to do it. And ask mm -hmm. for pricing and, and we price the, 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 the work as a base product um, that will get you everything you need for the point in time count. And then there's optional features. So some, some actually have, um, you know, a little bit more of a budget to work with and, um, you know, we can, so we can offer a bit more. Um, but we don't want to turn people away if, we, if the tech can be used. So we do have a, you know, this products and, and add-ons. If you didn't want to use this, if you didn't want the integration, for example, there are things like uh, um, like Eventbrite and other other tools and services that are just not integrated. So um, anyway, you have options, but this is just one that you know, for the larger regions that have a more complex need, it, it, it seems to, to work well to have it all integrated. Definitely. And I'm not seeing any additional questions at the moment. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. We'll look at them and we'll get them answered. Um, I know that there are also some communities on the line who um, have used the Counting Us app before. We would love to hear a little bit about your experience with it. Um, I believe the code to unmute yourself is one second. Star six. So I, I believe we have Carl from Connecticut uh, that might be might have dialed in, um, and Valerie Knight from um, Pierce County as well. And I, I think we also have Davis from South Dakota who all mentioned that they might be willing to uh, to speak up. So. If any of you are so brave and, and, and would care to share your experiences, that would be really appreciated because other people would, would um, benefit from hearing directly from a regional admin versus uh, the people that are behind the scenes doing the tech. This is Davis from South Dakota. Um, so we've been using the app for several years and um, from a large COC perspective, you know, we're looking to survey folks across 77,000 square miles of, of territory. Um, you know, having it, uh, the ability to decentralize things and work um, in, in, a, in a regional setting with um, our teams in, in, you know, different parts of the state 
we found that the app is very helpful and um, frankly, it's a very good bargain, I think, for um, what we get from it for the, for the cost. Um, being a COC that obviously you know doesn't have a, a huge budgets for um, expenditures such as this, it's been very helpful for us. Um, we, we've also um, been able to use the app in areas where we don't. It's important to know that we, where we don't have cell phone um, or Wi-Fi usage, that the data can be collected and then submitted later. So we have you know significant areas in our state where there isn't reliable cell phone or Wi-Fi still, um, and so the, the app is helpful in those instances as well. Thank you, Davis, for sharing. That's really that's really helpful. Um, Nicole, if you were to switch over, I think it's okay to show South Dakota's high level view. If you hit change on the top blue panel, you can see just so people can see. Um, if you don't mind us sharing, we're not going to share our actual client information, Davis, but just so people can see. There, you just pass South Dakota. Yeah. These are also the regions that we work. This wouldn't be your view, but this is our view into the data. Um, but just to give it a sense of the geographic coverage, obviously it's just one point on the map, but I mean, there's, there's uh, quite a wide range of, uh, quite an expansive re uh, region to cover here. And it looks like the 2020 count is set up in test mode, so that yellow bar is something to be, so you're aware of. Um, so they're ready to go for, for this next year. And then if um, you were to show that, the, so that's, that's actually good. So that's what we were saying earlier about having it in test mode. Um, you can just let app users download the app, enter the setup key, and none of those responses will be commingled with what's there for the actual point in time count. So it's it'll be up to the administrator to to switch make that switch when the time is ready. Um, and it's just the little green bar and that's the bot uh, icon on the top right where you just hit make active, and then you're good to go. So uh, this one's blank, but I think last year, if I recall, it was around 700 surveys maybe done through the app. But uh, you know we've got some expansive regions. South Dakota definitely being one of them. Texas balance of state, Georgia um, balance of state is also pretty significant size. Uh, Nevada. So there definitely seems to be some interest from some of these larger communities that that need the, everything decentralized. Um, you know we've got some smaller ones like Rhode Island, which is also a balance of state. But um, yeah, okay, thanks. And for the all data stores, you'll see loading up, there's over 40,000 responses in here. And that that's gives you an idea of the geographic coverage right now. So some of those bigger balance of state COCs definitely pop out on the map. And we're looking forward to adding a few more that we're in talks with. Some of you might be on the line uh, as far as larger COCs. And, and we definitely have some, some other smaller um, geographic coverage areas with some pretty large city, cities coming on board as well. So we're excited to, to expand our, our reach and our impact. One thing to note is inside the, clause, inside the contract agreement, there is a clause in there for data sharing for research purposes. Um, you know, one of the things that we're seeing right now with HUD is it's, it's been almost a year now and we're still waiting on data from 2019. Um, you know, in this world of trying to address homelessness, it really does help to, to be able to see where the needle is going uh, quicker than, than what we're seeing. Um, that lag time is not really uh, supportive of the work we're all trying to do. And just to, to share back that, um, you know, we do have the ability, if there's desire to participate in earlier research studies to share preliminary results, um, you know, once everything gets submitted to HUD, but not having to wait the full, you know, another nine months for, for something to digest. Um, Carl, I don't know if you happen to be joining from, from Connecticut. Uh, Connecticut conducted a statewide youth count last year. Um, if he's able to join, just please dial star six to, to unmute yourself. But I think that's another thing to, to mention is while this work is focused on, originally focused on the HUD point in time count, uh, we have seen a need to expand our reach uh, to help support other activities, uh, including disaster response, youth counts, um, you know, those both come to mind. But uh, as far as disaster response, if it's, we don't even mention it in our contract agreements, but if you ever need it, if you ever have a disaster in your area, a, we offer free service, 
where we will set up a, a account activity for you that's totally blank, ready to go. We did this for Hurricane Harvey. Um, and we have disaster response survey that really focuses on things you need to know to get through that disaster and triage people and get them back into stable housing. So that's a, that's a feature that, that we will turn on for you. It's not explicitly mentioned, but I just did want to mention that up. Uh, we, serve, we assisted Har uh, Houston and Texas Balance of State triage over 2,000 evacuees uh, after Harvey hit, and they helped us refine that, those survey questions uh, so they're ready for the next uh, disaster that unfortunately will, will, will happen somewhere. Um, so bring that up. Uh, so it's, it kind of speaks to the flexibility of the app and what else it can be used for, but also for the youth count, um, if Carl isn't able to join, I can at least say, that the, yeah. Are you here, Carl? Uh, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> oh, beautiful. All right, excellent. Yeah. All right, well, sorry. thanks for joining. Yeah, you're welcome. No, 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 sorry. I'm glad, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to uh, speak up and I've been tuning in, so thank you. Uh, so I'll just give a quick, if everybody can hear me, I'll just give a quick rundown about, about uh, where we are. I mean, this year coming up in 2020, this will be the fifth year that Connecticut does a statewide youth count. We outreached to SimTech or kind of early last year, maybe not as early as SimTech would have wanted us to, but, but kind of early last year to help us with the um, with the survey and, and, and with the app and, and seeing if the youth count, you know, if assistance could be possible. Um, so, you know, we have about a 20, the, the youth count's a little bit different, and I know these these events look different in different communities and in different states but for us we uh we have a survey that is a hybrid survey that's between some of the hud questions and some questions by community providers and and also some questions that are taken from guidance from from chapin hall um so we have about a 20 question survey that's certainly a lot longer than the pit survey and it has some conditional logic in it uh as well um we have a pretty robust count. I mean, last year, right, I'm saying is the first time that we worked with, with SimTech, but we had just over 430 volunteers across the state for the week following the point in time count in Connecticut. And we did somewhere north of 5,300 surveys of, of young people in all kinds of different community settings and you know including shelters and and outside and unsheltered and literal homeless spaces but then also a lot through schools and youth service bureaus and and community points um, we had access to the command center right uh, in the same way and, and with the same look that the administrators for the point in time count have um, with simtech which was really welcomed. And then the other thing that really helped us, I think, is that, well, I didn't know of any problems of anyone getting the app on a phone or using the app via a desktop, which is a really big deal for the youth count happening in a, in a variety of different settings, particularly in schools. Um, sometimes schools would rather do things on computers in a computer lab or um, if they had to do paper, we still could do paper things, but the flexibility of the app for the youth count for us, particularly the desktop version last year, made a really big difference with, with some of our school partners. And, and these are folks, you know, who are at the front lines of, of uh, addressing, you know, unstably housed or, or homeless youth in, in all of our communities. So it was really important to be able to, to level the terrain, so to speak, for technology for schools and, and we're, we're poised to do this again this year, and, and so I'm, I'm looking forward. I, I think as well, I would just add that uh, based on, you know, community response to this, it's really important that we have this application in, in Spanish. So we're working. Thank you so much, Matt and the team, for working with us to, you know, we'll translate this and, and try to get this, um, get this out to our community so that we can represent that population of Spanish speakers that has really been kind of overlooked in, in terms of the youth count as far as I'm concerned for our state. So um, yeah, thank you for the work. And any questions, I'd, I'd be happy to, to follow with anyone about this. Well, thank you for sharing, Carl. I think one thing that we, we learned together from last year 
in doing the use count was that when you went out to schools, the original survey that we had was asking what, you know, what school you're filling out the survey for. Um, so something we're looking to do differently for this year to help manage the data that you're having to, to work with is using the project feature in the command center to set those schools up ahead of time. So, you know, while it could be manual, you know, we can also sometimes take a, a large, long list if you're going to give us something in Excel and, and import that. But the, the benefit of having that is that when someone goes to select the, the, the survey, they're first going to be asked if, if they are, you know, if it is a school-based survey for the youth, what school it is, and there'll be a drop-down. So that way, if you have, you know, St. Teresa's school, uh, and they spell, you know, Saint out one time and it's ST the next, um, you're not going to have that when you have the predefined drop-down. So that same functionality is basically leveraging existing code that we did for organizations and shelters. So again, the, uh, the shelter-based survey does exist uh, for those that are using the app uh, either to supplant what's done in HMIS. Sometimes you've got providers that are using HMIS but not doing a very good job of it. Or sometimes you have people that just refuse to use HMIS altogether uh, for whatever reason. So uh, that's something that we don't tend to stress, but it, uh, some communities are really reliant upon that. So I, just, I do think it's important to call out. But what we're going to be doing for the youth count for this year is make sure that Connecticut can use this to uh, pre-designate schools instead of organizations yeah. and projects. It's school districts and schools. Really looking forward. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and, that, and that's the benefit of working with a community for several years. I think, you know, in Connecticut in particular, it's, um, is really helping to, to shape our work product because you're always thinking about, well, what if you could do it this way? Um, so some of the more heady things to talk about and think about, for example, with Connecticut is, the, you know, one of the things that, that others aren't doing, but if you have a large geography, it's worth considering is a geographic enumeration uh, and sampling, or so sampling and enumeration uh, model. Uh, and what we're able to do with Connecticut, which isn't you know, specific to the youth count, but it's general to the HUD point in time count, is only have to canvas a portion of the state, but still have numbers that have what's called statistical rigor uh, when deriving an estimate for the entire state. So, and we're able to do that uh, by having an effective sampling mo model set up up front. So, happy to talk that through with anyone that's interested separately. I think it's a little bit too much for uh, a webinar because there's a lot of questions and answers. There are, we do have a few other communities that have um, basically been receptive to that model that, that we helped establish with Connecticut. So. Um, I believe this year we're going to have Ohio and West Virginia also uh, be using that, a similar approach. Um, so they can thank Connecticut for being the thought leaders on, on that one. Um, and I think uh, in general, our overall point in time counts you know, throughout the country are going to be better for it uh, because it's realistically, there are some regions that you just can't cover everything with the volunteer space that you have uh, or it doesn't make sense to. So, um, you know, something else to share to, about Connecticut. Um, you know, they're, they're leaders in several wa ways in, in the HMIS, but also I think they're, uh, you know, some innovators in the, for the point in time as well. So we've always enjoyed working with you, and I appreciate you, Carl, for, you know, for sharing uh, what we've done for the youth count. So if anyone is interested in doing a separate youth count or a summer count, so we've got, Am you know, a few communities, uh, Texas Balance of State, Amarillo, that do a summer count, um, there is that option in the, in the agreements to, uh, to do additional count activities. So just something to keep in mind. But thank you for sharing. Uh, if anyone would like to unmute themselves, uh, it's star six. Uh, we have a few more minutes left in the call if you want, would rather talk directly. Um, you know, I do want to make sure everyone knows that they can use the, the, the website at a contact form and the, the, it says contact us in the top right of our website. If they want to reach out, if they have questions, um, you know, we'd be happy to, to respond directly uh, and, and, and pick it up from, from here. Hey, Matt, Donna Curley here. We did have a question come in asking if it is possible to get a signature consent piece for individuals 
taking the survey. Interesting. Um, that is potentially something that could be worked in um, if it's not part of the core functionality as it stands right now. Um, we did at one point have uh, something to that to that effect uh, in our in our core survey, um, but it, it kind of went by the implied consent model of, of HUD at the time. You know, similar to the HMI participation agreement, um, where it's in, it's based on an implied consent. But we can, if anyone has questions and want to talk that through directly, um, you know, we can. I would suggest using that same contact us form. We can see if we can work something in. And I saw that a question just came from Shay. Um, for the for signing up for counting us um, without any additional features, there is some um, survey logic that is applied to the survey based on a person's age. Um, the main required question on the survey is the age range of the individual, and that determines um, if they're going to be asked about their disabilities. Uh, substance use, et cetera. Um, and so if you go into the Counting Us app and use demo for um, the region, uh, you can see sort of what that logic looks like. So yeah, good point, Jay. These are, these surveys are tailored uh, to the, to the uh, person being interviewed. So if, uh, if they're not a someone that's a veteran, for example, so um, we we ask questions up ahead that will and, and use conditional logic. I know for the youth count, for example, we use a lot of conditional logic. Um, you know, basically, you know, it reduces the, the survey the length of the survey form itself. It's a big is a big deal. So, and it makes it per, it personalizes it for, for the person you're interviewing. Any other any other questions that are in the thread? Don't believe so. We had one or one comment that disability should be asked of everyone, no matter their age. Um, let's see, but if you all have any questions besides what you've had the chance to ask so far, again, you can reach us via the contact us page on our. Um, website at pointintime.info. Um, you can also reach us um, at the help desk if you already have an account set up with us at the submit ticket page. Yeah, and on that question about that comment, we can definitely make it available to, to everyone as far as, you know, your region set up. Uh, the disabling condition question is really uh, not used uh, except for the, the very last page of the point in time count, uh, where you're, there's some reporting on HIV, SMI, and, uh, and chronic status. So the, the reason why we're asking, the, you know, requiring it for adults only is because in order to be chronically homeless, uh, you do need to, to, to be an adult with a long length of stay or four episodes or more, plus the, the, the presence of stay in the condition of a long indefinite nature. Uh, so, if it's, if you want to use it, we, you you can have that tr that trigger, and so it's it's turned on for for use. But some communities just prefer not to ask it because they're, they're not going to use it for other matters. But this doesn't need to be the last time we talk. We really appreciate everyone taking the time to meet, join with us today. Uh, again, feel free to reach out if you have additional questions. We, we have no problem setting up uh, custom demos, Q&A sessions with regions. Um, you know, that's what we're here for. We've got some time between now and the point in time count. Um, we can get you turned on in, in within a week from getting a contract agreement. Um, you know, the more customization it needs a lot, little bit longer, uh, but just, uh, just sharing that. Uh, but again, thank you everyone for joining today. And thank you, Nicole and Donna, and as well as Carl Davis for, for sharing. But I think uh, we're at our time, so um, unless there's anything else to add, I think we're good. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great Thanksgiving. All right.